Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. This is Jitanji, Rappler columnist. With us today in the Rappler studios is Sean Ellis, the Oscar-nominated film director of Metro Manila, and the actor Jake Makapagal. They're here to talk to us about the feature-length film Metro Manila. You can send in your questions to Sean and Jake by tweeting with the hashtag Metro Manila the movie. Good afternoon, Sean. Jake, thank you for being here. Yeah, pleasure. Thank so, <coughs> uh, it's very exciting. Metro Manila is showing in the Philippines on October 9. Yes, six days. In six days. I can't believe that. Yes, but you guys have been getting a lot of buzz around the world, not only here in the Philippines. So let's start from the very beginning, okay? Sean, this is your fifth or sixth time here in Manila. Yep. How is it like every time you come here? Um, it's getting to be a bit more like home each time I come back. So, um, and it's obviously becoming a big part of my life. So, um, it's lovely coming back. I really enjoy coming back to the Philippines. So, you started off as a photographer. Mm -hmm. How did you make the transition to becoming a film director? I think I uh, had a need for my stills to move, and I wanted to uh, I wanted to hear them as well. So, I think the natural progression from that is to actually stop taking stills and. Move, make them make moving pictures. So um, I started to shoot commercials and pop videos, and then on moved on to short films and then feature films. Yeah. Okay. So Metro Manila obviously takes place in Metro Manila, and this was inspired by an incident that you saw. Mm -hmm. Tell us and recount to us what you saw that inspired the making of this film. Um, I was on holiday here in uh, Manila, 2007, and uh, I witnessed. Uh, two armored truck drivers having an argument on the street, and uh, and I stopped and watched, and they were they had uh, like guns and Kevlar helmets and vests, and and I thought it was going to kick off, and so I sort of hid in a doorway and kind of watched this scene unfold, and it ended with one of them kicking the truck in frustration, and then they both got in the truck and drove off, and I, I remember telling my friends about this scene, and I was kept thinking, I wonder what they were arguing about, I wonder what it was that this guy was so frustrated that he, there, was, there was nothing for him to do except kick the truck in frustration. I was like, I wonder what it was. And I started to think about the idea of uh, one of those guys blackmailing the other guy into helping for a robbery for the company that they work for. So that was, that was the sort of idea. And then it was, how do I get, how do I get that guy into a position where he can be blackmailed? And so I started to w you know, work backwards and say he was a family man coming from the province. And now he's being blackmailed into doing a robbery for this armored truck company that he works for. Mm -hmm. And then going on from that, what was going to be the robbery and how was it going to end? So that was basically the genre of Metro Manila, is this something that uh, you're, y you quite do a lot? I mean, the, it, it, we, we would say it's a crime drama. How would you describe the genre of the film? Heist, thriller heist, but also a love story. I see. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, it's a. It's yeah. A, a lot of people sort of said it's a bit of a mixed genre. It sort of starts off as a world cinema and then moves into like th a thriller. So the world cinema aspect is the the migration story of a family, mm -hmm. and you build the characters from there, and then slowly the thrill thriller aspect starts to creep in, and uh, and I think what happens is because you you've created these inroads to the family right at the beginning that you really care about them. So when the thriller aspect comes in it really does put you on the edge of your seat in the sense of what's going to happen to this family. Okay. Also, let's talk about the revolution of digital media as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I read on The Guardian, which was a great um, write-up about yourself and the film, that because you were able to film this film using yeah. a DSLR, um, it significant, significantly cut down the cost. Mm. So tell us about the pre-production aspect of making Metro Manila. Like uh, how many cameras did you use? How was it like having you know, a limited crew? Mm. How many people helped you make this film here in Manila? We were, I mean, there's a lot of people that helped us, but we were a very small crew. Mm -hmm. we, we, we moved in two vans pretty yeah. much. And yeah. we had the crew in one van, <coughs> the actors in the other. Although maybe we should have split them in case there was an accident and yeah. <laughs> we were lost all our crew and all, right, our right, right, right. all our actors. But um, no, it was, uh, we, the, the whole idea was that um, to keep the budget down, um, because obviously to find finance for a film that's going to be in Tagalog, it's, it was quite a difficult feat. And so it was, 
it was in the end it was sort of self-financed and I ended up raising the money myself and so we had a small amount of money to make the film but um, a way of executing it and, and keeping it as a, as a doable project was to shoot it like a documentary so we we used these digital SLRs that were small and gave us uh, the ability to shoot the film like a documentary maker, a filmmaker. So we would be sort of on the run, you know, um, finding focus and and recording sound from the camera and uh, very handheld and reaction reacting to what was happening around us. And I think also that's the coda of uh, documentary filmmaking. So when you watch the film, it mm. adds a realism to the fiction because mm. you think that you're watching a documentary almost about this family so and again it, it enabled us to be very indiscreet you know uh, uh, well very discreet uh, because you're very indiscreet if you have a big crew right. yeah, yeah. you know and you're shutting down streets and you you know you're you're you know it becomes it becomes like this spectacle for people on the street so it was um for us we became uh, we blended we in blended in yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, many times i just had the camera around my neck with a yeah. Yeah, you know, with a Hawaiian shirt, and I just looked like a tourist, and nobody took any notice of me. Especially when we were shooting the Black Nazareth scenes, because there was, you know, thousands of people, and we didn't want them looking at the camera, so because they would destroy the shot. So when Jay yeah. and Altia were, were traveling through the the crowd scenes, we w we were hidden with these small cameras and were able to record it. And nobody recognized us, of course. We just blend it in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so because you know. So let's talk about the casting process, because <coughs> I know that. Jake, you came into this project first as part of the pre-production, yeah, right? <coughs> and then you were asked by Sean, how did that come about, Sean? Um, because, you know, um, yeah, yeah l l let's well, talk about the casting We have a common process. friend, so uh, Celine probably recommended me because I'm sort of, like, I, s I know a lot of people, I have a black book of, 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 uh, of actors, an actor's mm -hmm. book. I mean, my, my Facebook page is probably, 80% actors. Okay. So, and not only that, I, 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 I know where to find a gaffer, I know line producers, production managers, all that. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, because of my age, you know, it's 30 years plus that I've been here, so I know a lot of people, right? Why are you laughing? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so. You your age up, not me. So, <laughs> so uh, <coughs> Celine Rang said, meet this director, uh, he, he needs some help with the production and all that. and. Uh, we met at the restaurant for breakfast, and um, he showed me, told me about the story. You know, I, I was like, "Wow, this looks interesting in my mind." And then he, I showed me the character breakdown, give it to me, emailed me, and it said, "Oh, thirty years old, military training, slum, They live in the slum." I said, "Oh, this will be a. How can I convince him now that I can do that?" Right, right. in my mind. Yes, just in my mind. Because Jake. Here, usually yeah. the roles that you get uh, aren't much similar like your film. I've uh, never had a role like Manila. this. No, no. The, I, what the roles I do here on television is either I'm a doctor, a lawyer, a father, a doctor, right. a lawyer. Very a professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yes. you know, and I never feel bad about that, but that's how they will cast me. Right. And then the last one was a grandfather. I see. Yeah, and I thought, well, I got to find my niche then. I, I'll go to the independent cinema and put my energy there in my heart and maybe someday a director, an Oscar nominated director will come up and say, would you like to take a journey with me? And that's exactly, and that's what, happened exactly what happened with Metro Manila. That's, that's a real dream. Mm. So let's talk about going to Sundance. Yeah. When you guys went to Sundance, what were your expectations? I wanted to win. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about him. That's straight up? No, 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 no. Okay. no, because I saw the rushes without the music. Uh -huh. uh, he, he made us, uh, we were dubbing here, right? Just sent it mm. by a, D I don't know how you sent it by him. Uh, ADR yeah. here, and you yeah. saw, he, he, they saw the cut, but without the music. Yeah, so we were able to catch a glimpse of it with Altea and John, and I thought, wow, just silently, like, wow, I, I've never seen Philippine, a Filipino movie even without sound to capture my attention, I think we were in unison in thinking that we got something here. So we went to Sundance, and of course, you know, JM was there, Ana Bad Santos, John Arcelio was there. All fours, we want to be there, and we want to win. Yes, and you won the audience 
um, award, yeah, award yeah, 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 for world, world cinema. cinema. Yeah, yeah. How did that feel like, Sean? Uh, it was pretty <laughs> amazing. I didn't <laughs> think we were going to win. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was just yeah. happy to be there, and uh, I mean, I loved the Sundance Film Festival. It was my s it was my second time of having a film in the festival, and um, they really support independent film, and and uh, so they feel a little bit like family to me in that respect. They you know they they always they're they're there and they support you. And for me, it was just a great opportunity to have a world platform for the film you know, to launch it at Sundance and, mm -hmm. and for it to be in competition, which was great. But you just, you know, um, I, don't, I don't hold my breath when it comes to competitions in that sense, because yeah. it's just an honor to be, uh, to be involved and be, and be selected. So um, I wasn't really expecting anything, to be honest with you. So it's good not to expect, but you know, I mean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and then suddenly we were He was actually saying, you know, oh, we're locked out during the uh, announcement and nobody's, uh, mentioned about the audience award yet. When we got to the announcement, Marielle Hemingway had a, 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 a mistake, right? She made she a mistake, <laughs> and yeah, and she sl she went past the, the the announcement and went on to something else. And they'd already suddenly put the uh, the a winning board up behind her. Of Metro Manila. And they kind of came in and said, "You need to go back and give one more award." And so we'd already knew we'd won before she actually said yeah. it. Oh. So, and at that point, like John Arcelia and you guys were like jumping up and down like crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. That was they all they all pushed me up and we yeah, all ran up on stage. That's and fantastic. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. So then let's talk about this really big Academy Awards that are coming up. We do know that Metro Manila is an entry from the UK. Mm. How do you feel about this? This is going to be, I mean, this is your, you've been nominated for an Oscar before. Mm. So you've been there. Mm. Are there expectations this time? No, no. Not at all? No. Okay, because now <laughs> I mean. we've got 80, we've got around 80 films 80, that are, 80 plus, yeah. Yeah, yeah. around 80, entries, 90 yeah. entries. Yeah. From there, you're going to get shortlisted to 12, uh, nine, no, to nine, nine rather. Yeah, right, right. And then from there, you get your final five. Yeah. yeah. I do realize that there have been changes in the regu regulations for the entry for foreign film. Yeah, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, are you talking about the one about oh, the, 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 the yeah the BAFTA? Well, I, there was a rule uh, that the um, submitting country uh, that had to submit a film that was in a language that was indigenous to the country that was submitting it. Right. Right. So and since you're representing the UK with a Tagalog film, yeah, it so wouldn't have passed. It wouldn't. Uh, yeah, they changed this rule, I think, in 2006. But because what the, uh, the the languages we would have to, to submit to being uh, UK would be Gaelic or Welsh. Uh, yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. So there was those sort of uh, very small kind of uh, languages that are spoken in our right. country. But um, they changed the rules to enable uh, people to go to foreign countries and make films uh, not in their, in their mother native tongue lungs, or yeah. native mm -hmm. tongue. And, um, and they opened it up to be allowed to be submitted. Yeah. So from the very beginning, you wanted this to be in Tagalog. What, what, where was the decision to make the film in Tagalog? First, it was in English, though. I mean, the script you brought the script in English, right? The script, oh yeah, the script's written in English, and then um, the idea was to, you know, because I was, I felt I was given a gift when I came to the Philippines. You know, I had this idea, and it was given to me as a gift, and um, and I wanted to be faithful to that gift. I didn't want to go and shoot it somewhere else. I wanted to come back here, um, but I wanted the film to be realistic, and I wanted it to be a film uh, that Filipinos would look at and say, yeah, that's. That's what Filipinos' life life is like here. That is, I can see that, I understand that, and but it be presented in a way that ha they hadn't seen before. Mm -hmm. um, so, for me, it was very important for it to be completely realistic. And so, if I came back and made a film here in English about a truck driver that works in, you know, Quezon City, it's not going to be realistic. Right so and authentic. Yeah, yeah, and authentic. It had to be completely one hundred percent authentic. Yeah, exactly. So we decided to. We just said, well, we're going to, right from the, from the get-go, I was like, it's got to be in Tagalog. So, um, okay. and then it was a question of having the, you know, the actors translate the script that was in English into Tagalog, but each character, each actor translated, translated their, their, their own dialogue so that they would translate it in a way they felt their character would say it. I see. Yeah. So, Jake, tell me, how was the experience working like? With, with, with Sean, Sean on this? Well, 
It's great because because you're very collaborative. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to talk in the third person. So, you know, I mean, he's a very uh, collaborative guy, and he gives you the space to. There's a lot of discussion uh, before any take. Uh, he would ask, you know, uh, opinions from Altea and, and John, and then gather the group together, and would ask, you know, what do you think of this guys? What do you think? Do you think Filipinos think this way? Do you think a Filipino would do that? Do you think your character would? And I love that. It's like being theater. I mean, they, they give you the space to sort of like rehearse and just, just be open to things. And that was fun. That was the fun part. And of course, his style in, in directing actors is probably like the rote memorization when you repeat a lot of things. I, I, I don't know if that's his uh, style because he picked it up and started doing it here in Manila, but it kind of worked for me too because not only that you memorize your lines, but also by the nth time or the 20th time that you probably take, you know, do it, you're not thinking of yourself anymore. You're not conscious of it. You're just delivering it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, absolutely. So, and I really like that. I wish I could do that in theater for rehearsals, but with the limited time, you can't do it. But right. I really enjoy that as an actor. Mm. Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Sean, tell us about working with the Filipino actors. How was that experience like? Uh, it, was, it was fantastic. And like I said, I was given many gifts here. And uh, Jake was one of, the, you know, one of the ones I was given right at the beginning. And like, like Jake explained, you know, uh, Celine Lopez introduced us and originally Jake was going to help us cast the movie, but it was apparent after sort of sitting with Jake for an hour or so that he was, he was the leading man. He was um, the guy. So we, we put Jake on camera and, and something very interesting happened. Jake's kind of body weight dropped and he became like two stone heavier with the worries of, of the world on him. And that was really interesting to see that transformation. And so... I knew it was going to be a very interesting journey to take with uh, with Jake, and 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 it was just a pleasure to 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 give him the space to work and see what was coming back. And you know, a lot of a lot of the time we spoke about you know uh, the, in, the sort of the inclination of what was being said from the ink from the English to the Tagalog, and Jake, you know, unusually because actors like lines, he was like, I can probably say that with a look. You know, okay, let's try that. You know, and it's kind of, and I think there was an interesting thing because there was so much being said that's not being said in the film, and that, and I think that's what's really for me. I love watching the film, even though I don't uh, speak Tagalog. I I see a performance, and I can see what's really going on under the skin, and that was that was a lovely thing to sort of watch. And but I'm sure a challenge as well. How was the editing process for that? Long. <laughs> <laughs> a year. So yeah, yeah, it would go yeah, back yeah, and forth. Yeah. Then we you would, would send a clip. Would we would send sound bites to of the scenes that we'd sh uh, that we'd cut during the day, and we would send them back to email them to Jake, and Jake would then translate them uh, and email them back for us the next next morning. So um, and then if there was anything wrong, we would have to change it and then do it all over again. So <laughs> yeah. it basically took about nine months. Yeah, that's a year. Yeah, nine months. Nine months. Nine months. Yeah, I remember I, I just went back to that place. Yeah, I mean, it was frustrating because, you know, the sound bites and, the, you know, I didn't have a computer in the beginning. Then, uh, you know, I have to find a place where I can do it and then download the sound bites and translate it, ask my mom what it, <laughs> for, you know, translation as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's, it's, it was, it was kind of nice at nine months. But then after that, you know, the wait again to... Uh, the next phase again of uh, after mm. you know there's another phase after the sound bites after the recording mm. yeah and there was a lot of choice in the takes as well because that was another thing that when when we started working together like Filipino independent films generally just do one or two takes because they yes. don't have the time and, the, yeah, and they, they yeah, you yeah. know they got to get moving so they mm -hmm. do one take so and I think and um, that's not your process at all yes that's not my process uh, no. right no, no, no. I was able to actually yeah. speak to Althea oh yeah uh, your actress yeah, yeah, who's here yeah, actually yeah, yeah. she's here with us now and she was the one who told me that you know you were very insistent on taking again and again yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. until you got what you wanted yeah you know it's kind of um, you know we still had a limited time and obviously a limited budget but um, because I was operating the camera as well so I was I was concentrating on framing and lighting and I'm still trying to concentrate on the performance as well so um, I'm, and I'm, 
so we got into this habit of kind of like you say repeating everything yeah, and yeah, yeah. and I would talk over the actors which is actually a really bad habit as I like for a director though. but I will I will say you know say that again go back say that again you know and then do it again and, and yeah, do it again and you're just it's, it's easier for me just to say again you know do it again and they just repeat it and it might be because I didn't get it in focus and I need the just the, for them to say it again and I just pull focus or mm -hmm. it might be something framing it might be something that happened in the background but I'm constantly saying do it again do it again and so Jake had to explain to all the new actors that were coming onto the Every set. Time. It's not that you're doing anything wrong, but there will be a lot of takes. Yeah. It's not a one take shot and then we move on. Yes. So it was a it was a lot it was very intense in that sense. I like it. I miss me. it. Yeah, yeah, I want to make another yeah. movie. I know. <laughs> so yeah, that's the next question. Is the next movie gonna be in the Philippines? Um I don't no, I don't think so. I not like the your next answer one, but though. I like your answer about, you know, before you do or jump into a project you fall in love we have to fall in love with it first. I see. Right. If you're going to spend, if you're going to spend two, three years on a project, you have to be absolutely in love with it and obsessed with it. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's a little bit like dating somebody you don't really like. It kind of is. It's like you don't want to uh -huh. be there. So it's kind of like you have to fall in love with a story, and you know. And I fell in love with the Philippines, and and you know, especially you know Metro Manila and and the story of Metro Manila, and 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 for me that was that's what made me passionate and and really you know helped me through the whole long three-year process of making the film. But so, to answer your question, am I gonna come, I would love to fall in love with another story in the Philippines um, and come and make that. But um, at the moment, I haven't found anything. Yeah. Yeah, because you've, I mean, all this time has really been focused on Metro Manila. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Till this very yeah. second. Still, yeah. still going on, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we have questions from people that have been tweeting in from Aaron Salazar. Uh, he sent a question via Facebook. If Metro Manila, is Metro Manila rather reminiscent of the Broca masterpiece Mainila sa ng Liwanag? Have you seen this film? And if so, did this influence you to make the movie? Have you watched any Filipino films I prior? have watched yeah, yeah, Filipino yeah. films, yeah. I mean, I, I like again, I, I immersed myself in the culture here and surrounded myself with Filipino people. You know, we were only two Westerners that, that came to make the film we, and then the rest was Filipino crew and, and cast. And so very early on I, I wanted to immerse myself with, it, with as much Filipino culture as possible and I wanted to see what's being done before movie wise and what, what are the sort of benchmarks for, mm -hmm. for cinema in this country. And, and uh, you can or, um, or a Mata Plata or was or one of the Plata first films yes. I sort of uh, watched here. And Bona. Bona. Yeah. And, Bona. Bona. Yes. And, 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 and again, uh, same actress, um, Nora, was uh, Benawi. Because was was we were well. going to shoot in Benawi, so I wanted to see what, what had been done before. So these kind of references, but the film that you're talking about, I haven't seen actually. Yeah, but people uh, have reference to the have film. Have they? Yeah, they're, right. they're, they're sort of like, oh, because that was a benchmark for... Absolutely, you know, for city. Philippine cinema yeah, yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. It just happened to be in the same city, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, as we know, there are also two other fil films that have a Filipino theme that are also shot here that are entries uh, yeah. to the Oscars this year. Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, so we have Transit and we have Ilo Ilo. Yeah. Now, I haven't watched these films, but someone from Twitter, Honey Bee Fly 1929 asks, what sets your film apart from the two other Philippine themed films that have been submitted to next year's Oscars? I'd love to answer that, but I haven't seen I haven't seen those yeah, two films either. Right. So right. No. Yeah. I know that I know that they, they have Tagalog language in them. Mm -hmm. And so um, like both both entries are migrant stories. Is the Iloilo is, Ilo is more about a, a Filipino um, maid who lives, lives in, Singapore. in Singapore, right? And transit is of Filipinos also living in, in Israel. In Israel, yeah. correct. All right. So we have another question, and that's coming from, let's see, Bobby M. Campos. We spoke about what inspired the film. But what continues to inspire you as a filmmaker? Uh, that that uh, that rare time where you fall in love with an with an idea, you know. Like I said, it's a little bit like uh, trying to find a relationship. Um, 
that works. It's sort of, uh, or finding that person that you're going to fall in love with. It's a little bit like that when you're making films. It's, uh, and that inspires you, yeah. You're constantly looking for a script or a story that you're going to just fall in love with and want a relationship He's with. He's an observer, this guy. I know, I mean, He's prior to, no, is, prior yeah, to this starting, yeah, yeah. he was looking out the window going, yeah. look at those guys really? hanging off of there. There's some things that he are, sees yeah. that we, we just totally just blind. Yeah, but I think yeah, that's yeah. what's really interesting about this film, Metro Manila. It's told through the eyes of oh, a Sean British is. filmmaker. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's, you know, everyday Filipino life that probably us as Filipinos yeah, yeah, take yeah, for yeah. granted, oh, right, right, like right. you were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. a defamiliarization, it was coined. It was like seeing the eyes of, the, of a very familiar city, but in a very unfamiliar way. Because, um, I guess because I'm seeing it in, in a certain way, which is not, uh, not being a Filipino. So I see it as a, a Westerner. Okay, yeah. so you also have a premiere tonight? Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tomorrow. Jake, why, why don't you invite everybody to come? Okay, um, we have an exciting day tomorrow, the 3rd of uh, October. We've been waiting for these for years. <laughs> I can't even believe it. It's our last premiere before we actually have a theatrical release on October 9th. So uh, please, uh, yeah, watch our film. And I guarantee that you will like it and love it. Yeah. Send me. All your money back? Is that what you're going to say? <laughs> I wanted to go in that direction, <laughs> but I can't give you money. It's like, if you don't like okay. it, I'll buy your, yeah, I'll yeah. Buy your cinema buy ticket, ticket for you. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> well, it's interesting that, you know, to me, a British filmmaker is able to yeah. come out with a piece of art, piece of work that really is able to encapsulate our, our culture city. Yeah, and our city. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's a really special thing. It is, it is. So we want to thank you, Sean, thank you. for coming to Manila, making a film named after our city. Yeah, that's a flag. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you're putting us on the map, and we can't thank you enough as Filipinos. Oh, that's My great. Pleasure. Thank you so much, Thank Jake Makapagal, for being you. here. And of course, Sean Ellis for coming to the Rappler Studios. We'll see you again next time. Thank you very much. That's Thank wonderful. you. Oh.